I think it's likely that we would have somebody, but we don't do it for any specific reason. We're looking for absolute competence. Uh, I fully expect that we will have many women involved with not only, I mean, I've had it with the campaign, but we're going to have many women involved, and I think that uh, you're going to see that, and you're going to see that very strongly. So uh, I look forward to it, and I know he was misquoted a couple of times. He's been misquoted actually a lot, uh, but we're going to have women involved at the absolute highest levels. That was Donald Trump earlier today defending his relationship with women. And in a, a statement reported from his campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, uh, essentially saying that it would be pandering to pick a woman or a minority as a running mate. The mainstream media took that to mean that the Donald Trump uh, campaign didn't think a woman was qualified. He straightened that up. And now to even go a little bit further is national spokeswoman Katrina Pearson. Katrina, first of all, congratulations. Thank you, Charles. Take a big bow. Uh, you know, you were there from the very <laughs> beginning. You've done an amazing job representing Donald Trump. Uh, but, Thank you. you know, you got you to gotta say that there still feels like every now and then there's an inconsistency. Now, Paul Manafort's comments, uh, what exactly do you think he said and what do you think he meant by that? Because the mainstream media has taken that, you know, of course, today, and they're running with it. Well, you know, this happens quite often uh, with the media and the Trump campaign, so I'm not quite sure uh, what exactly they thought he said. Uh, but he likely said what I've been saying. Uh, a lot of people are pointing to uh, minorities and women uh, for those reasons. And Mr. Trump does not look at race or gender when making decisions for those that he puts into leadership. He looks at uh, qualifications. He looks at competency. And most importantly, he looks at someone who believes in his agenda to make America great again. And that's really what's going to lead this uh, vice presidential effort. You know, uh, today when Donald Trump came out in North Dakota, there was something a little bit different to his swagger. The cadence was a little bit different. Uh, I think we saw the teleprompters, the speech was a little bit different. And even comments that uh, Vince Foster, who, who, uh, who was mentioned earlier uh, in the week, has no place in a campaign. Is this that so-called pivot that everyone's looking for? Now that he's seized the nomination, he's got the numbers, is this the Donald Trump we should look forward to from here on out? Well, this is the presidential Donald Trump. This was not a rally. And there is a big difference between policy discussions uh, with media and, and conferences like this uh, as opposed to the rallies. And this is the Donald Trump that you would see, you know, as commander in chief. And I'll just I'll make that distinguish again. The rallies are an opportunity for Mr. Trump to engage with his supporters, to have fun. Um, he wants everyone to enjoy the campaign trail, and he has a lot of fun with them. But what you saw today was the Donald Trump uh, that a lot of people have been wanting to see, talking policy and giving prepared speeches, and, and being what they would call more presidential. Oh, okay, they. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but but, it, but the people still want those rallies, okay? So, you know, they I, absolutely do. Okay, so I guess we'll put an asterisk on any misstatements at the rallies and, and, and attribute it to adrenaline and excitement because you guys have got to be extraordinarily excited. Uh, now, pivoting to, to Hillary Clinton, obviously Donald Trump has been talking about uh, the different issues involving her. Uh, what's the strategy going forward uh, to, to continue to talk about the, the things like the email uh, server and, her, uh, and some of the incompetencies and her track record as Secretary of State, or will we actually get a chance to hear more things? Because I thought this energy independence speech was phenomenal. I'm one of these people who have been pounding the table, unleash the greatness of America. I'd like to hear more <laughs> right. of that than the Hillary email stuff personally. Well, I'm going to say all of the above. Um, you know, crooked Hillary has a lot to answer for. Um, they, we're talking about who's fit and who's unfit to be president of the United States. And there's a lot of people um, who really don't know the details about this particular email scandal. And for someone who's been running for political office for essentially 25 to 30 years, who's held office and to this day continues to make the types of judgments that puts national security at risk is a problem. So you're going to continue to hear more about Mr. Trump's policies because we definitely want to contrast the difference between a Trump administration and yet another Clinton administration. Uh, and then also why Mr. Trump is best fit and best suited to be commander in chief, whether it's creating jobs in the economy, foreign policy, trade, energy, as we just mentioned, and all of the above. All right. Well, once again, congratulations to the campaign and to you, Katrina, as a person. You know, I've known you for a long time. I'm really yeah. proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charles. Alrighty. I appreciate that.